Hi, Green Ridge. Pastor Brendan here. Time for another Music Monday. I think we had a little blip earlier. Tried doing it, so I'm gonna start over. Merry Christmas, and I uh, hope you're anticipating a very happy New Year. Uh, got to enjoy some time over the weekend with my family, and enjoyed having snow on the ground. Actually, having a white Christmas. I know it wasn't anything compared to what they had up north, but you know what? It brought a lot of joy to my family, my kids especially. And so what, what a great time to have together, um, just in that picturesque type of environment to be able to worship the Lord and consider his humility, what he did here on earth for us. We're actually going to, um, you know, we're coming up on New Year's Eve this coming week, and I want to encourage you at a song that we love singing here as a church, All Glory Be to Christ. All Glory Be to Christ is actually a recent song as far as the lyrics are concerned, but it's sang to the, soon, to the tune of a, of a classic for New Year's, Old Lang Syne, where really people will get very introspective singing that song, considering friends that they've made over the year, perhaps friends that they've forgotten, left behind, haven't seen in a while, and looking ahead to the new year, what is that going to entail? And a lot of people get very introspective at New Year's and just kind of start examining their lives. And so what a great song that this is that helps refocus us. It calls us in these first two verses to examine our lives But it refocuses us to remember all glory ought to be to Christ. Our whole lives ought to be about our one treasure and prize, Christ alone. And so let's take a look at at the scriptures where these songs are are taken from. Verse 1 begins, Should nothing of our efforts stand, no legacy survive. Unless the Lord does raise the house in vain, its builders strive. You know, this is taken right out of Psalm 127, which says, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. You know, when we're working on things, we might be trying to build our own legacy. We might be trying to uh, work on things that we want to see taken place. You know, David, of course, talked about, God, I want to build a temple for you. And God said, no, you're not going to build a temple for me, but I'm actually going to build a temple for you. Um, talking, of course, about Christ coming and how Christ is going to build his church. But the psalmist here talks about if we are looking to create our own legacy, and a lot of times we can get caught up in that, whether it's having a nice home to retire into, whether it's providing for our children, wanting to leave them a nice inheritance, even if it's making a name for ourselves in our community, in our job, hoping that we will be long remembered even after we retire from a job or career or a volunteer situation. If we're not about the Lord's business, the Bible tells us we're doing these things in vain. These legacies will not survive. Think about it. Those from just a few hundred years ago, just a couple generations, little is known of them. It's forgotten. How quickly they're forgotten. Even people just in previous generations are quickly forgotten and they're still here. And so we need to be about the Lord's business and he will build those houses permanently. Verse 2 continues along in that same vein, that same splash of cold water to wake us up. To you who boast tomorrow's gain, tell me, what is your life amidst that vanishes at dawn? All glory be to Christ. This, of course, is calling right from James chapter 4, verse 14, which says, Yet you do not know what what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time, and then vanishes. You know, when we think about our lives, these 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe even 100 years that we have on this earth, we would consider just in the scheme of all of humanity, oh, it's so quick, it's so short. And taking it a step further, if we trust Christ, we know that this is on the spectrum of eternity, how small that really is. And so if we put all of our efforts into this life, what really do we have? It will be gone. Focus on Christ's life. You know, I think of the pharaohs, the Egyptians who put all these treasures, put all these incredible things in them within their tombs. I tell you, they're not enjoying them today. And it doesn't appear that their children or grandchildren, great, 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 great grandchildren really enjoyed them because we're only just discovering them now. Many of them destroyed, some of them stolen by robbers, perhaps lost to the world forever, uh, trying to better understand who they are, what they are about. You know, archaeologists find tombs all the time, and they're amazed at what they find, but they say, who was this person? Who was this person? Their life has vanished. They left some things behind, but that life is gone. Let us live lives for Christ, all glory being to his name, because he will endure forever. 
And that breaks into this wonderful chorus that we sing throughout the song. All glory be to Christ our King. All glory be to Christ. His rule and reign we will ever sing. All glory be to Christ. You know, there's many times in Scripture that we see a call to give glory to God, glory to God alone, glory to Christ alone. You know, I I really enjoy Jude 1.25. Jude 1.25 tells us, To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory and majesty, dominion and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. How wonderful that is. That we would give all praise, honor, glory, majesty, dominion, all authority to Christ. Surrendering our lives to Him. What a great reminder of the, the things on this earth and the things that we deal with, how they don't matter so much when we consider who Christ is and what He's done and how He will take care of us. And so let's sing that with joy and fervor. Then it goes uh, to verses 3 and 4. Gives us kind of some assurance here. Gives some assurance of Christ's satisfaction, of his sustaining, of his provision. Verse 3 says, His will be done, his kingdom come on earth as is above, who is himself our daily bread. Praise him, the Lord of love. You know that, of course, taken from the Lord's Prayer found in Matthew chapter 6, Luke chapter 11, and even takes it a, a step further in that prayer. We pray, give us this day our daily bread, but it says, who is himself? our daily bread. Of course, that being, we see that in John's gospel when John records that Jesus proclaimed himself as the bread of life, the very bread of life. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that God speaks. And of course, Christ being that word made flesh. How incredible that is. It continues on with that same vein of provision and satisfaction. It says, let living water satisfy. The thirsty without price, we'll take a cup of kindness yet. All glory be to Christ. You know, that reminds me so much of Revelation chapter 22, near the end of the Bible, which says, The Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come, and let the one who is thirsty, let the one who desires take the water of life without price. You know, uh, a reference to the Lord's free grace, how freely and how graciously he gives it. Without price, Christ giving up his life, giving us his righteousness in place for our filthy rags of sin and shame. You know, that line, we'll take a cup of kindness. Yeah, that actually comes from the original song, but it's a neat little play on words because when we consider his grace, it is undeserved kindness. What a kindness that God has shown us through through offering this living water to us. How wonderful it is. And of course, we go back into the chorus again, all glory be to Christ. Then we come to some future hope that we have in these last two verses. Verse 5, filled with wonderful truths from Revelation. When on that day, the great I am, the faithful and the true, the lamb who was for sinner slain is making all things new. You know, here we have three references straight from Revelation 5. Faithful and true from from Revelation 19. Then I saw heaven opened up and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. The lamb who was for sinners slain. Um, that says, it says that several times throughout scripture, but I, I was quickly drawn to Revelation 5. Where it says, worthy is the lamb who is slain to open the scroll. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. And then is making all things new. We see that in Revelation 21, 5, where he says, Behold, I am making all things new. The one seated upon the throne, declaring that the new heaven and the new earth. How great that is. And then we see, continuing on in Revelation, in verse 6, Behold, our God shall live with us and be our steadfast light. And we shall there his people be, all glory be to Christ. Two more references from Revelation. We see Revelation 21, 3, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. Behold, our God shall live with us. It'll be as it was in the garden again, but now forever and ever. 
And then Revelation 22.5 finishes out the song. And night will be no more. There will be no light for lamp or sun. For the Lord God will be their light. And they will reign forever and ever. You know, there's this idea in Revelation that there's not going to be a sun, moon, or stars. But the light that comes from God himself. That from the very beginning when he said, let there be light. That light, the light of God's glory, is going to be the only light that we need. No sun, moon, or stars. Just the wonderful light of God's presence. The light that shined into the darkness. And the darkness could not overcome it. How wonderful that will be. Behold, our God shall live with us and be our steadfast light. You think of how important the sun is. We grow food from it. Um, it lights our day. Um, it helps us see all these things. It provides energy to the earth, heat, warmth. We're so dependent upon it. How much more dependent will we be on the Lord himself in that day, in the new heaven, the new earth? We shall ever his people be. All glory be to Christ. And so I hope this song encouraged you. I hope you'll take some time to listen to it this week. And I hope you'll take some time on New Year's Eve, perhaps to sing these words. And that 2021 would be a year where your entire life is giving glory to Christ. I hope to see you Sunday.